Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Entrepreneurs in a Game podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a wonderful guest, Nancy Tierney. For the past 13 years, Nancy has been writing copy for some of the most brilliant six and seven figure coaches and consultants online today. But now through her business, Firecracker Communications, she helps her own clients to get clear on their message, own their unique voice, and have a blast writing copy that shines like a diamond in a sea of cut glass. When she's not coaching or writing, she's singing jazz with her band, Nancy Tierney and the Boys, and trying to develop her chops on the tenor ukulele. A fourth generation California girl, Nancy now lives in New York in a 1930s house called Alice with two adorable tabby cats. <laughs> Nancy, welcome to the Entrepreneurs in a Game podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nina. I'm happy to be here. But this is great. I'm really looking forward to our call today. And Nancy, you know this is all about the mindset. Yeah. So we have listeners, we have viewers who are running their own businesses and they get stuck. So they get stuck in so many different ways, but they often get stuck around the stories. They're telling themselves maybe about they're not playing big enough or they're not able to play big enough and, you know, scary to be visible. So there's all sorts of fears going on around growing their business. So first of all, I'd like to find out more about you and your background and how you came to be a copywriter to the stars. Oh, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. Um, I, my background has always been in public relations and marketing and sales pretty much and or fund development for nonprofits. So all of that was just soaked in communication. You know, it's all about communicating with someone else in a way that gets them excited about what you do or invest in what you do or wants to donate to what you do. So while I was doing all that, I never called it copywriting. I was just writing, you know, it was just, I was writing what needed to be written. I was writing marketing materials and all of that. Um, and then my just, my career took a big turn um, during the AIDS crisis in the eighties. And I, that's when I started working for in the nonprofit world for hospice, but doing development, doing fun development. Um, but so it's kind of, my career has been all over the place, but it's been really soaked in communication to begin with. It's something I just, I'd always end up doing. It's like if I work somewhere and there's something that needs to be written for some reason, I would just get it. And I loved it. You know, I loved doing it. But I got into copywriting when, and this is so much about mindset. I had a business I adored. It was called Unconditional Confidence. It taught entrepreneurs and, and some artists how to express themselves or speak in public without just melting into a pile of nerves. Um, and I adored it, but it just didn't work. It was probably the only thing in my business life that I went for and it failed. It failed financially. The work itself was phenomenal, but it was a business model that was just really ridiculous, which is, and I will share it with you, which is don't, Base a business that depends on asking people to do what they fear most. <laughs> it's a really silly way to go <laughs> because people will find a way not to do it, you know, unless it's a make or break thing. But speaking in public, I can hide from that, you know. So it was just, it was a really tough, it was a tough model. But I, I bring it up because the fact that it didn't work played a real number on my mindset. Um, and I just took a break for a while. I was going to take a break for a while and just not do anything and figure out what was next. But while I was doing that, people were asking me to write things for them. They were asking me to write copy. They were asking my emails and sales pages because I had friends, coaches, mostly coaches that were in that world. They had all this online stuff to do. The online world was kind of new-ish then. People were really breaking out and doing their businesses online then. So I kind of fell into it and I thought, oh, I'll do this for a while, you know, see how it goes. And I just, it just kept going and it just kept going. And um, so it was kind of like this, it wasn't something I set out to do. I started doing it. And once I started doing it, it started being successful that I thought, I should probably really figure out how to do this. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it, but I'm just doing it. So I really got trained. I went and worked with many copywriters, um, really got into it. 
And that was another mindset thing too, because I realized the more I learned about how to do it well, the more freaked out I got. Um, so it played, I had to really like get myself around that as well. Cause when I was just doing it, I was just doing it. I didn't know there was a right or wrong way. Why did that freak you out? The more you did it well, the more it freaked you out. Cause it was like, Oh, you mean there's all this stuff that I was supposed to know. And there's all of these, you know, it just, it became a bigger deal. It wasn't something that just came naturally out of me. It was like, Oh wait, you know, am I, you know, there's this whole other and that can happen. Just like the more you learn sometimes, it can be really good. I mean, in that it really expands your awareness, but what, it can also trigger the stuff inside of you that goes like, can I do this? You know, is this possible? You know, I, I was just doing it. Now there's like a right and wrong way to do it. There's like these rules. There's like this whole body of work. So I, but you know, I got over it, you know, and I, find, I think the thing that's helped me in terms of getting over mindset issues is really looking at what I do know. Because I think sometimes we don't think we know enough or we tell the story that we are not enough or we need more information or we don't have the background to do it. Or, But I think if you really look just logically sometimes at what your background has been, what your experience has been, all that you have lived through, all that you are, you'll go like, what? Wait a minute. I've got a ton of resources here. I have a ton of experience here. But there's a story that goes on in the head that says, like, I don't know, you don't know enough. You know, you're not enough. You need to probably go another three years doing that, which is like, real, you don't really need to do that. But This is crazy, isn't it? Because we have so much information. Often entrepreneurs are running around trying to find more information and get better qualified. But actually, the key is not to know more is to clear out all that stuff in your head that keeps telling you you don't know enough, you're not smart enough, you're not competent. You're inadequate. And it's, I love what you say, but look for the evidence of what you do know. Yeah. yeah. And that really will show you where you are right now and how much you have to offer, how much value you have. And so much about learning new stuff is to learn it and then let it go anyway. I mean, I remember this one guy I adored. He was a great um, therapist and mindfulness teacher. And I was telling him about this. It wasn't copywriting at that time. It was another body of work. I said, oh, I'm learning this and that. And he goes, he just looked at me and said, yeah, it's just, that's good to learn and then to just let go of. <laughs> very wise. <laughs> yes, it was, it was very wise. And the way he said it was like, you just knew you, he, what he was talking about. So that's how I got into, into the copywriting stuff. And it just took off from there. And I started really loving it. And I started loving the clients I was working with. But the real shift for me that really required a mindset shift was going from being just a copywriter to becoming a copywriting coach where I actually got to teach people and work with entrepreneurs one-on-one -on -one and teach them how to do it, coach them through it and collaborate with them in it. So they actually have the chops to do it. So they can actually go forth and know how to write their own copy that they don't have to like depend on a copywriter. And I, want, I was so drawn to it, but there was a part of me that kept sabotaging. I would do it, and then I would sabotage it. I would like, I go, oh no, I've got to go back here and do this big monstrous copywriting job that I don't really want to do. Um, and it would just derail my progress forward in, in creating that. And I swear, Nina, it took me, <laughs> it took me a while to get it. You know, that was like, wow, this is just a story in my head. Because I, and the first story was, well, I don't think anyone's going to want to work this way. I don't think it, you know, even though I want to do it, you know, I don't think anyone, and, it was, and then I would prove that wrong, that there was people that loved it. And they did want to be able to write their own copy. And they loved the process of learning. And they loved working in collaboration. So I kind of, you know, I would throw out my false thinking by kind of proving myself wrong. And then there just came a place where I was like, it just was like, you just, you have to line up with this. You know, if that's what you want, you just got to line up with it. And you have to stop sabotaging it by taking things that derail it. And I, and I eventually I did. So, um, but it could have been a lot quicker, you know, if I just said, whoosh, you know, this is what I want to do. It's going to work. I can see it's going to work. People want it. Let's go, you know, and not be tempted to like reach backwards into, into something that's old and familiar and limiting. It's so easy. 
It's so easy to do. Don't do it. <laughs> no. And it sounds that there was real fear in coming out of your comfort zone and trying something in case it didn't work. Yeah, and that, and, and that's the other thing too, that was an old symptom from my business deal. You know, what if this doesn't work and I have to go through another failure, you know? So there's a lot to be said for really looking at those things in the past that are still haunting your present, not to dwell on them, but to go like, ah, that's just that, you know, that's just a leftover from how many years ago. <laughs> um, and, and it's, what's interesting is that that one failure discounted the whole string of successes that preceded it and that, and have since, you know, followed it. But it's amazing how that one little thing could just like lodge itself and really come up and scream at you anytime you're trying to, or wanting to, really grow into what you're meant to be, you know? It's yeah. just, it's, yeah. really, it's crazy, isn't it, what we do to ourselves? As you said, we can pick out the one thing that didn't go well, discard all the stuff that did go well, and just fixate on that and think, well, the same thing would happen again, therefore I better not do that. But the fact is that we can never recreate a past situation again because you're different, the variables are different, you know, it cannot be replicated exactly as it was. It's absolutely impossible. Every yeah. conversation we have with someone can't be replicated because it's unique each and every time. But yes. Just hold on to the negative part because we give it a meaning. This means I can fail again. This means I'm a loser. <sighs> this means it won't work. And it's those meanings we attach to events which cause our misery. Yes. And that's, that's so beautiful and so important because I was, as I was thinking of talking to you today, I was remembering that during that time and in that business that any little setback would just devastate me because of what you're talking about. Because I, I, it wasn't that this one thing didn't work. It was that since that one thing didn't work, everything's not going to work. It's like, since that one little thing didn't really go the way I expected it to, that means I'm a complete failure and I'm doomed. And it's like, it's so interesting how we wrap this big old story around just one little thing happening. And I have to say, two things have happened recently that have been, that in the past would have just killed me. In the past, I would have been on the floor for weeks thinking of giving up everything and they just don't anymore. You know, I, I was kind of going like, wow, that's just, that is so changed for me. I just know what it is. It's just, it's just that one thing. I don't have to wrap a big, horrible nightmare story. <laughs> it. But the mind wants to, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. Yes. And isn't awareness wonderful? Because once you know you can do that, then it stops you from doing it. But if you don't have that awareness in the first place, before you know you're down a rabbit hole, it can be for days. And yeah. you know, it's really hard to pull yourself back up again and get, get, you know, get on with it. So what was the key that changed your thinking? What was the key that made you think, okay, I can do this. I can have another go, you know, that took you forward. Um, what was the key? I think, honestly, it's just everything I learned about, um, we call it mindset, but for me, it was more um, just what's true in terms of my own, my, what, I, what I learned myself by looking at my own stories and really seeing stories for what they are and really developing a relationship to them that isn't like, I'm not the story. I think that's what really helped me. And it was just through my spiritual life and my meditation and really looking at the story for what it is. And yeah, it's in watching it. You know, just like we're talking about watching it and seeing it as something that's not me. It's just the story. It's a story um, that I created. It's a story that however it developed, who cares? And I think it was as I started really separating from the story and knowing that I was so much more than any story and that since that's true, I can write any story I want. You know, it's yeah. like, who's in charge of the story here? Yes, so creating them all, aren't you, in your head? Yes, you know, so, and we're just, we keep repeating the same one over and over, time for a new story, right? But I think it, it, what helped was not just trying to get rid of one story and write a new one. It was really being in a, a, a space of being that 
was without story that allowed me to really see it for what it was that allowed me to make the shifts that I've been making and continue to make and will continue to make is, is that, you know, yeah. um, that connection to that part of you that's so much more than, than your mind. Um, it's that, I feel like that's really key, uh, to happiness and to joy and to all of us really being able to become who we're meant to become or who, we, or who we're even, you know, who the calling that we feel in us to become. It's like, we're not even becoming it. We're just returning to who we really are. But now I'm really getting off. Into no, that. no, I completely agree with you. It is connecting to who we really are, which is obviously hugely magnificent. And yes. all our, you know, all our, innocently misguided thinking stops us from knowing that so it's getting that thinking out of the way and then we can really click into who we are and enjoy it and play and have fun because that's all it's all about really isn't it yeah yeah so taking it very seriously and very very heavily yeah and it's, it's funny yeah. Isn't it? because the beliefs these stories a lot of them we make up as children don't we and then we drag them through our life and they have a huge impact on our lives with again without us knowing and we think well I don't know why I'm feeling like this I don't know why I'm feeling as if you know I'm never going to achieve what I want I don't know why I'm feeling like a failure and why are other people managing to do so much more than me oh comparing ourselves to other people that's a big one isn't it it's a big one it's a big one it's a you know boy that can really sabotage you that can really just cut your legs right out from underneath you um and I know, I don't know if it's done it, it's not done it so much for me in my business, but it has done it for me in music. You know, and my music life is really, really important to me. And it's so easy in there to just go like, why do I even bother? You know, it's like, rah, rah, rah. there's all these people that are amazing and da, da, da. but it's not about any of that. It's not about any of that. It's like, you are who you are and your expression is your own. And it's not about doing it in a way I feel it's not about doing any of this in a way that impresses others or dazzles others. It's about doing it in a way that really feels satisfying and rich and joyful for you. That is your unique contribution. That is what you can contribute that no one else can. It's not about comparing and trying to do it the way Susie did it and Timmy did it, you know. <laughs> you know, and which we do as beginning entrepreneurs, don't we? I mean, we look and we're like, well, she's doing it that way and that person's really successful and she's doing it that way. And I think initially that's fine. You know, it's good to have mentors and people that can guide you and examples that inspire you. Being inspired is totally different than feeling, you know, in competition with. But then I think at some point you just have to go like, yeah, but what, what really turns me on? What, what, is, what is in me that wants to come forward? Uh, how do I want to do this? Yeah, and not worrying about what the people think, not seeking their approval, doing oh. what feels good to you. I think this is probably one of the biggest, um, I don't know, limiting beliefs in our society, isn't it? Worrying about what people think about us, needing their validation, and really attaching our self-worth to what other people think of us. And as an entrepreneur, that can be quite scary because you have to put your stuff out there, don't you? Otherwise, no one's right. going to know who you are. Well, like you were talking about, you know, invisibility, you know, about as we people that struggle to get visible it's you know it, in some ways it's like everyone's visible now but it's like just join you know jump in the pool but at the same time to be visible in an authentic way is scary because it's like if, if you're really putting you out there and not just you're not just doing an imitation of someone else that's in some ways less scary because it's you know if nobody likes it or if you get you know slammed it's not really you you know, you, you kept you in the closet, but to really, you know, bring yourself out and what is important to you and what has heart and meaning to you and to share it visibly in the world. Yeah. You know, it's, it can be really, um, it can be scary I, as I'm saying that, I mean, the fear of is, is the same fear we have always had, which is a rejection you know, that no one will like it or, or no one will even care. <laughs> That'll even be worse. <laughs> People won't even hate it. They'll just ignore it. But it's the stuff, you know, this is yummy stuff for us though. It's why the entrepreneurial path is a spiritual path because it brings up this stuff so we can work it out so we can see it for what it is, which is, you know, you know, fear is a really interesting thing and fear of being seen and known. It's so ridiculous because you're absolutely safe. 
you're absolutely safe. No matter what anyone thinks about you or judges you or what they say about you, it has, it, it can't really hurt you unless you attach a story to it. Right. Yeah, unless you allow it to. And we're the ones who give permission each and every time, don't we? Yeah. 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 It's just fascinating. It really is because this fear of rejection is, is one of our biggest fears, isn't it? Fear that, you know, people won't like who we are or they, they'll say something critical, or they'll judge us, and how scary is that? Therefore, it's such a struggle to put offers out there, to tell people what we do. And I went through all of this myself in my first business. I just hid behind my computer and didn't go anywhere. I didn't even put my name on our website. So it, it, it really is something that can stop business owners, because if you, people don't know who you are and what you do and how you can help them, then it's going to be really hard to find clients, isn't it? It is. It's going to be really hard to find clients if nobody knows who you are. And the thing is, is that it's so interesting because I always ask people, it's like, well, just give, your, give yourself a day of not caring a rip about what anyone else thinks. It's like, what would you do? You know, what choices would you make? You know, and it'd be, it, it's so fascinating to just see how much we are run by the opinions of others. Now, in business, we think, well, well, I have to. I have to be aware, you know, what my clients think and my potential clients think. I don't want to offend them. I don't want to chase them off. And there's something to be said for that only in this way, which is, <laughs> for one thing, if you actually are being who you are and you're being true to who you are, you're definitely going to attract the right clients. But the other thing is, when it comes to doing looking at what it is that we really long to do and following our own instincts and expressing who we are, it is important, I believe, to bring in that element of how can I be of service in a way that is authentic to me? So you are including the other person. It's like, I've got a ton to give. You know, I have got so much to give. And, you know, how can I do it in a way that really turns me on and really will be of service to the person that I'm meant to work with. And that becomes really interesting too, because then it's, it's not just you expressing, because self-expression is one thing and communication is something else. Because you can express yourself wildly and crazily and no one can understand what the hell is going on. But when you express yourself with the intention to actually communicate, which means to connect, you will channel that you-ness into that desire to connect. And that is a different form of, of expression. You know, you're still expressing yourself, but you're doing it with the intention to really make a connection with someone else. You're not just out there doing your own thing, you know, not giving a, a crap about anything. <laughs> so it's doing both. And when and becoming visible, doing it in that way where it's like, how do I really express all that it is that I am and all it is that I have to give in a way that is totally me and is still of service to the person that I'm really trying to connect with and communicate with, the person I care about, you know, our clients, the people that we're really meant to serve. And how, how do people go about expressing themselves authentically in copy so they can connect with a the person they're writing to. I know we haven't got a lot of time to go into this and copywriting is a massive subject, very complex, yeah. very deep. But what's the top tip you can share about how to write authentic copy that engages the reader? I think the top tip that I can give you is when you write anything, make sure you're writing to one person, meaning you really have in mind that one ideal client that you are talking to at this point with this piece of copy. If you're writing an email about something that you've got going on, there is someone who is ideal for that. There is someone who's struggling with something that this thing that you have to offer is really going to help. And you have to bring that person to mind. Um, she or he should be so crystal clear to you. I mean, as real as real could be. Someone that you know inside and out. And then when you sit down, you're not writing to a crowd. You're not writing to everybody on your email list. You're not writing to everybody on Facebook. You've got that one person and you're just going to write from your heart to their heart in a very sincere, authentic way and write what it is that you have to say. Now, there's a five-step process I have that makes it easy for you to kind of do that. It's like, well, what do I, where do I start? How do I do it? But if you just write with that intention, it's going to help you. The words are going to come so much easier for you because you're not trying to figure out 
how to speak to a crowd or how to speak to everybody. It's really hard to do. So just really spend time knowing who that person is. It's the most important thing that you can do in all of your business. And when you write, just write to him or her. Just make sure it's just him or her that you are writing to. And the copy will come. Your voice will come too. Your authentic voice will come. And the one thing that will help you with that is when you write your rough drafts, don't try to write a perfect piece of copy when you're writing for the first time. Write like a raggedy, messy, <laughs> rough draft. Just go down. I'm going to write to this person and this is what I have to say. You know, get clear. It's like, uh, and like, write, 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 write. Just write whatever comes out. Write like the wind. Don't stop. Just write. And don't let your editor in the room at all. Do not. There's going to come a time when he or she can come back in and tell you, all the things that you should have done and how you should have write it. And it'll come up as you write it going, oh, that's stupid. Just keep writing. Just keep writing. Just let it go. Just write and have fun. If a stupid idea comes to you, write that down. It doesn't matter. You're going to be editing it later. But you want that flow because that's going to really help you access your own voice too. You just want that flow and let it be fun and let it be crazy and write pages and pages. It doesn't matter. Now you're thinking, people always think, oh, but that'll take too much time. It won't. It will take so much less time than if you try to write a perfect piece of something right off the bat. That will take forever and it will not be as good. It won't be as alive. It won't have your energy and it won't have your voice and it won't have the little phrases that you really need that are going to connect with that one person that you're writing to. So write, 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 write. And then after you have this big mess, then you can go back and go, ooh, I like this part, I like this part, and you can edit it down into a more clear, concise piece of copy because you'll have something to work with. And you'll have something that is very you and that is authentic to you and that is very alive and that is written directly with the intention of connecting with your ideal client. You can't write and edit at the same time. Believe me, I still try to do it. I will confess. You know, we think, oh, I just want to write this out. Don't do it because you're trying to work two parts of your brain at the same time and they fight each other. Your creative brain just is blah, 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 wants to finger paint, you know, just wants to like, woo, woo, woo. But your logical editing brain wants to come in there and control and slice and do it and, and they can't work together. They can work separately. So go with your creative mind and just go, woo. And then after you're done with that, bring in the editor and go slice, dice. It'll help you a lot. You'll write better copy. You'll have a lot more fun. <laughs> and you'll end it. You'll just, it'll, you'll have your own energy and voice in it. Excellent. I love it. And also what I found helpful is when I write um, a blog post or whatever I'm writing, not to worry about the other person who's going to like what I'm writing. Yeah. And so yeah. people, because otherwise the focus goes on this person is going to be reading it rather than keep the focus within you and getting your best stuff out there yeah absolutely it's like you can't bring your editor in or their editor in either <laughs> you don't bring in the peanut gallery while you're creating it's just not gonna work it's not it's gonna, gonna work. work so nancy and you work with some you know very successful entrepreneurs you know six seven business entre entrepreneurs what have you observed about their mindset generally that's helped them to build such successful businesses? I think they have, I think the thing that they all share is kind of what we've been talking about, which is they have a vision, they take risks, they go for it. And when things don't go exactly as planned, it's not the end of the world. It's just like, huh, okay, well, what can I learn from this? And they don't let it drag down their vibration. They don't fall into a story. They actually get more curious. I think that's what's really interesting. They just get like, I'm not sure what this is about or why this happened this way. I don't know where this is going. I'm just kind of curious. You know, I, I don't know what's, where it's all going to lead. And as a result, that the gift of whatever it is that wants to come in can come into their experience because they're not telling themselves this story about themselves being a total failure or everything's doomed. They just, you know, they have their moment. Of course, they have their moment. They go, wow, that really was not what I wanted. 
that was not what I expected. But then it's, that's it. You know, it's like, okay, well, what happened? Let's learn it from it logically. But then they really, the next step is really in, internal, which is like they just get realigned with what it is that they want and they're open to learning from what did happen and they're just going, okay, well, what's next? You know, what's next? Let's, let's move on. Um, I see that in all of them. Um, that and um, a real willingness to own what makes them unique. Even if they aren't really aware of it at the time, it's like they have an inkling of it. And I found that people I've worked with for a long time, it gets more developed and more developed, the more they kind of honor it and play with it and, and really put themselves out there. Um, I work with one person who's not afraid to use language that uh, some other people would not use at all, but she, it really is such a part of who she is. It is a part of her voice and it totally works for her. You know, it just works for her and it works. She attracts the people that are going to be able to play with her in that way and aren't going to be offended. Um, and then uh, other people that are just are totally different, a lot more reserved, um, you know, quieter and a lot more internally focused. And it's just, it doesn't matter. They're still expressing themselves in a way that's true for them. It's their natural way of doing it. And it's just automatically, you know, it, that's what really attracts the people that are perfect for that, you know? Absolutely. So I think it's trusting, mm. trusting mm. a lot of it. Mm. Trusting in yourself. Trusting in yourself, but also your impulses and your desire, you know, trusting your desire, trusting the thing that is pulling you forward, you know, trusting the fact that you don't know. I think that's really, really important. So those times when you just don't know, to trust the big don't know, like, I don't know. Because when you're in, I don't know, anything is possible. It's like, you're not latched on. And I think there's times when we all get there, it's like, I don't have a clue what I should do next or what even coming next. That sounds very familiar. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's being able to stay in, in the don't know, but here's the deal. Being able to stay in the, I don't know, but still take action anyway. And I think that's because I don't know, I'll say for myself, I can be in the don't know and it's just a way for me to just stay completely stuck. Yeah, well, I don't know. So I guess I can't do anything. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not certain, you know, and it just, yeah, another year goes by. <laughs> but for, I actually had a note. I don't have it here anymore, but it said, don't know, do it anyway. And it was the best note I ever had because it is in taking some kind of action without knowing, without even being certain, it still moved me forward and it moved me into knowing. It moved me into clarity. I couldn't, I couldn't wait for clarity. I was trying to like wait for clarity and there's some wisdom in that, but you can only wait so long, you know? And then it's like, wait a minute, this is just a way for me to just not, to just not know and to stay stuck where I am, which I don't want to do. So I always say, don't know and do it anyway. Don't know, take a step forward. Don't know, take two steps forward and find out, you know, I think there's, there's, there's wisdom in action. You know, a lot of them are, you know, mindset and there's a lot of spiritual things and we're all into being now, at least I am. It's like, it's about being and having, and it's like, you know, all of that. But I think there's a lot of wisdom in action. There's a lot to be learned by just taking action, even if you don't know. Absolutely. I completely agree. And Nancy, how can our, our listeners, our viewers, how can they find out more about you and your work? Well, they can go to my website. It's firecrackercommunications.com. Um, and if they're interested in, you know, really the copy aspect, I have a free ebook that's really a great little Bible. Um, and you, they can get that at 12tweaks.com and it's just the new number 12tweaks.com. Um, but then you can also find that on the website too. So if you go to firecrackercommunications.com, you can also find the opt-in for the ebook. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute ball talking to you. And I'm, I'm sorry that we have to end the interview because I thought there was so much more we could have said about mindset and being in business. And thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. I've had a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. Time's flown. And for everyone who's been listening, watching, thank you so much for joining us today. Till next time. Bye-bye for now.
Thank you.